up, Sauce Gang, and welcome back to the channel. Hot Sauce Beats here with a surprise reaction for you. That is right. You saw the thumbnail correctly. You read the title correctly. We are watching Rye Toast for the very first time and checking out their video, the entire story and lore of Security Breach Ruin FNAF Theory. Now, you guys, it sounds like you hated Matt Pat's FNAF Ruin Theory, which is pretty much the exact opposite of FNAF's Ruin Theory. And half of you loved it, half of you hated it. So I'm confused how if you hated Matt Pat's, but some love that. So anyways, that's besides the point. So I want to see another perspective of FNAF Ruin Theory. And I thought this is a perfect time to check out Ritos for the first time. But before we jump into this, why don't you show Ritos some love by subscribing to their channel. And if you enjoy my reaction, smash that subscribe button because it greatly helps. But enough talking. Let's get to reacting and roll that bomb acid tro. Hot sauce beats is finally here. Hot sauce beats is finally here. Eat, sleep, make beats. Eat, sleep, make beats. Hot sauce beats. Woo -hoo. Oh, I'm not gonna lie. I low key want this to be the exact same theory. I think that would be hilarious. Ruin is finally here. And hey, what up, Red Toast? Away. Across the board, people are Dude, saying it's some luscious locks. From modern Five Nights at Freddy's. Even people who disliked or even hated security. Bro, breach that are is giving some luscious hair. For what they've done. And why wouldn't they? Everything. I'm not gonna lie. I'm, I'm jealous. <laughs> I'm jealous. I got a receding hair. I've always had the receding hairline, though. It ain't getting worse. But it ain't getting better. You know what I'm saying? From the graphics to the gameplay with the whole mask mechanic to even the fact that it's actually scary this time with a few decent jumps throughout. But that's not what we're here to discuss today because I could gush about this game for hours. Today, we're on a mission. The one thing this DLC definitely has in spades is lore and new things are being found every day. But for now, we have some serious information to go over. So Slices, put on your apron. I'm guessing the books. Let's bake ourselves a theory. For the purposes of this video, I think bake it makes the most sense to like split that. it into two sections. First, I'll go over the basic plot and lore as directly presented in the game with zero speculation. Maybe a light implication every now and then, but just straight <laughs> plot line. And remember, this is just a theory chat. It's not concrete canon. It's up for debate. In the second half, I'll do some theorizing. However, for the point of the video, Video, I'll do some very easy to agree with light speculation. Things that are pretty clear, but technically involve some sort of implication. I'll leave the really crazy theories to start next week. As an example, if this video was about FNAF 4, the first half would just be going over the mini games, the plot within, and maybe suggest that we play as the crying child. Whereas the second half would go over that we could be playing as Michael. And I wouldn't touch on the theory that maybe the whole thing is real in tests done by William Afton. That's more speculative. Got it? Good. Then let's dive right in. The basic story explanation is our player <laughs> character Cassie gets a message from Michael. her friend Gregory to come to the pizzaplex, but he doesn't say why. When we get there, we can't find him, but we do find the Pizzaplex is in a terrible state after what the papers call an earthquake. Going a bit deeper, we find a walkie-talkie in which we hear Gregory tell us that he's trapped in the pit at the bottom of Roxy Maybe I should have watched this one before Fun Fs. We need to come save him. And Going Pats. deeper, we encounter Glamrock Chica. She tries to attack us, but powers down almost immediately. It's likely that this happened because of the terrible damage and somewhat melting that she's endured so far. We go further in and find a Faz wrench, a tool used by the staff at the Pizzaplex, and Cassie remarks it looks just like her dad's. She soon encounters oh, Monty, falls into the sewage, and ends up at Monty Gator Golf. She then encounters the damaged staff bot that gives her the virtual augmented neural network integration mask, or the Vanny mask. Vanny we mask. will get into it. It shows us an AR version of the real world that tells us that some objects are and aren't real. It also displays the security nodes. These are virtual manifestations placed around the Pizzaplex that power and act activate security measures, things like locked doors and the like. They are part of the MXES or MEXIS system, something that was put in place by someone to conceal and trap the endoskeleton in the basement. We will- So do we assume that Gregory did that, but it's not Gregory? Who would have trapped the mimic down there? We'll get there. Once we put on the Vanny mask, we meet Helpy, a digital assistant. He seems like a perfectly friendly digital assistant, but then he puts an ocular implant that allows him to be in our vision even when we're not wearing the mask. He also occasionally says some whack shit, but when he does, his <laughs> eyes go yellow and some veins appear on his head. So something else is going some on. Whack shit. Finally, in this section, <laughs> like we meet this, the rabbit dude. entity trying to stop us. We're all pretty sure what it is, but that's technically speculation. So for now, I'll just say this digital rabbit is trying to 
protect the security nodes and in doing Digital so, rabbit. I'm digging right to vibe, man. To I like this. I like how he's just kind of like nonchalant because he knows, dude. And, I mean, as we've seen, you know, FunNaf made a video about just the insane amount of hate and like people take this stuff way too seriously, man. Again, these are theories. Stop hating on someone for making a theory. I'm liking this. Follow I'm liking this. this. this I'm, I'm glad we're doing this. This is good. The game. Using the Vanny mask to navigate the pizza plex and turn off the security nodes, following the instructions of Gregory and Helpy. All the while, Mexis and this rabbit entity is trying to stop us. However, we do learn some things in the meantime. Not only did Monty replace Bonnie, but Bonnie's full animatronic is still at the pizza plex, just destroyed. If you deactivate every wet floor bot and do something else, I think, I don't know, I still can't get it to work myself, there's a hidden room in the back of Bonnie Bowl that shows Bonnie's full damaged animatronic surrounded by four more wet floor bots. There's a broken bowling ball that seems to imply that he was damaged here as well, but any more is going to be speculation. This does, however, nearly deconfirm that Glamrock Bonnie was used for parts to create Burn Trap, mainly because all the parts for Glamrock Bonnie are still here. We also learn that Roxy did in fact replace Good Foxy, point. but much earlier than Monty replaced Bonnie. She also fully replaced him in the Pizzaplex as a whole. Bonnie Bowl still exists, but where Roxy Raceway is, Foxy's log flume once was. For unknown reasons, it and all of the Foxy merchandise around it has been tucked and hidden away. Finally, oh, wow. at Roxy Raceway and Roxy Salon, I like how he's breaking down the game more. Character Cassie. From the Roxy dialogue at the end of the game and the cardboard cutouts we see here, we learned that she had a birthday at the Pizzaplex on the 11th, but nobody came. Roxy was there, and eventually, possibly, Gregory showed up too. Other than that, Aww. no one showed up. Speaking of Roxy, there's some interesting things about her animatronic specifically. When we put the Vanny mask on, Chica and Monty just appear in the weird x-ray vision that most things do. Freddy completely disappears. I forgot Freddy. We'll get into Freddy. But Roxy <laughs> looks different. We see a digital Roxy's recreation grainy. of what Roxy looked like before she was damaged. Furthermore, Roxy is the only one that recognizes us as a child, remembers us being there, and turns friendly by the end on her own volition seemingly. And finally, when we deactivate her at the instruction of Gregory and Helpy, this digital recreation goes away. Now, Freddy, totally forgot about him. We encounter him in Phaser Blast, and while he is missing his head, implying the princess quest ending, yeah, you see he that seems prototype? to have a weird stomach mouth. Any more is going to be speculation, so I'll leave the rest of the discussion when we get there. I hope the message got through. I feel like I've been in here way longer than the previous floor. I just need to find any kind of exit at this point. Huh. <clears throat> Maybe this will help. Today's video is brought to you by Morgan & Morgan Injury Law Firm. Morgan & Morgan is America's largest injury law firm, which means they have the resources to fight for you. If you've what? ever gotten into something like a car accident or a slip at a store, I've never seen a, a law firm advertise a personal injury lawyer on YouTube to before. Your and Morgan & Morgan can get you the compensation you deserve. In the past, you may have hesitated to seek representation yeah, if you because need, of the Use law Morgan & Morgan. People. Use Morgan & Morgan. That's little crystal or something it feels fragile almost like I could just break it if I just squeezed it too hard oh boy going down into the hole under Roxy Raceway <laughs> we see that something has tunneled <laughs> out of go. the old pizzeria because there's a tunnel leading straight from there through the giant Freddy statue presumably this is the blob since we see the blob leave early in the game but we don't know for sure going through we find a huge cave filled with all the water mushrooms, and mushrooms and luminescence and even further we see what looks like the pizzeria with some weird wooden sections inside Candy Cadet tells us a story which I'll summarize to a mother and son live in a cabin in the woods there's a monster in the woods. The mother locks the monster in the basement. The mother sings a lullaby to the son every night. Eventually, the monster learns the lullaby and tricks the son to open the door with it. The oh, story ends there. Cadet. We go deeper in Just and we find pez. the rooms that make up the FNAF 6 labyrinth. Even further in, and we find the Mexis Central Hub. We put on the mask and turn it off. In doing so, the rabbit entity pops out of it to grab us, but gets sucked back in. We then power a forklift to bust down the cement-covered doorway, and we meet it. The endoskeleton that's been locked in the basement. We learned that this whole time, who we thought was Gregory was this endoskeleton mimicking his voice. Run! You will get there, believe me. Then, seemingly, Gregory's voice calls us, the real Gregory. He warns us that this is all a trap, we're not meant to be here at all, and- Well, how about real Gregory? Why weren't you talking to us originally? Because the mimic 
can intercept radio frequencies. I forgot about that. That's right. Tells us that his friend has instructions on how to get out and then leads us to an elevator. If you go in the elevator, Gregory explains a bit more of the situation. There's a bit of feedback on the walkie talkie. Then he says that he understands that we did this for him and he's sorry, but he has to make sure that we weren't followed. And the elevator drops, seemingly killing Cassie. But then at the end of credits, Roxy says, Cassie? So she's probably alive. There's also two more endings here. If you disobey Gregory's orders and eventually go left, you find a Fredbear cutout holding two ice cream cones. If you put on the Vanny mask, you see a recreation of the Save Vanny Good Princess Quest ending. However, Freddy's head has been swapped out for Helpy, and they're all holding ice cream cones instead of what they were holding originally. We hear Gregory said that he found a safe place to hide, and it ends. However, there's one more secret ending, this one much harder to get. There's four hidden cameras throughout the game, each of which open a door in this chase sequence. If we've activated all four, the the endoskeleton is no longer just an endoskeleton. We get there and it's created this stitched version of several different mascot suits all created oh, into bro, one. I, I, I haven't seen this video. That is creepy. With elephant and bird parts stitched together. If we go down the doors we've opened during the chase sequence, we then go into a room very reminiscent of the scooper room from Sister Location. We turn it on and what looks like a scooper okay, and I have a seen this. Yeah, we've seen this part. dismantles the endoskeleton in front of us. And let me let me tell you, I was not expecting that. He's kind of in the Family Guy dead pose. What is that? And if you want to see me actually play through Security Breach Ruin for the first time on stream live, there's a full six and a half hour VOD on this channel. But if that's too long and daunting, I actually have something to announce. From what I can see, two people solved the puzzle that I've been laying out for a few months now. So shout out to Pool Noodles and Sandwichly. But I am officially launching a second channel, Rye Toost. It will primarily Rye be Toast. highly edited versions of the streams that we do on this channel, done by my wonderful, talented, funny, and wholesome editor, Queen Coda. <laughs> Expect content like this. Huh? Uh, who were those little friends? <laughs> oh, shit. The sevens. But it will also be home to videos I want to make that oh, don't really fit on a FNAF Theory channel. Things like Pokemon Nuzlocks, Mario game rankings, cooking content, who knows? The channel officially launches next week, but the channel is currently made, so you can go find it here to subscribe and turn the notifications on, and I'll see you in a week from now. One of the videos on launch will be part of my ruined security breach playthrough and i personally cannot wait to start this new venture with you guys thank you so much for allowing me to live my dreams like this yeah. but anyway that dope. was the entire plot of ruin it's a very All weird right, let's plot get in that lore bro points to go on but now it's time to start theorizing so bake with me for a second as we'll start chronologically first i think it's pretty safe to assume that the canon ending for security breach is officially the princess quest save vanny ending after all, Gregory, Vanessa, and Freddy's head are nowhere to be found in this DLC. Second, Freddy is damaged and headless in the same place he would be at the end of that ending. Third, the Princess Quest machine in the Vanny hideout is toppled on its side with an AR yellow sword stuck straight through it, implying that it's been beaten. Fourth and finally, I think part of what the Fredbear cutout ending is telling us is doubling down that the Princess Quest ending is canon. Next up, Cassie's dad. Now, I'm working so Matt Pat and him differ on that. Got a much more controversial theory in the background. Expect that one in like a week or two. But for now, let's just go over the direct implications in the game. When Cassie picks up the Faz wrench, she notes that it looks just like her dad's. And when we look at the description, it says that they're used by Faz technicians. So we can assume that her dad was a technician at the Pizzaplex. I say was okay. because several times in this game when he's referenced, he's referenced in the past, past tense. tense. Bonnie was his favorite. He used to collect things like this. I think this is all implied that our father worked at the Pizzaplex oh, as sevens, a technician and but has gone. since died. I do think he's very closely linked to the Pizzaplex though, at least the franchise as a whole. As we learned that his favorite animatronic was Bonnie, he used to collect old vintage lunchboxes, and he knew what happened to Glamrock Bonnie. So he's been around in this franchise for quite some time. Any deeper speculation than that wouldn't suit the vibe of this video. So we'll leave it <laughs> that Cassie's dad was a technician at the Pizzaplex but is now dead. Now I'm going to save the van 
mini mask for when we talk about Helpy, Gregory, and the endoskeleton, so for now, let's just talk about Mexus. I think it's fairly safe to assume that the rabbit entity chasing us throughout the game is just the digital manifestation of the Mexus system. I also think that Mexus is the good guy here. If the mask is what allows oh, really? us to deactivate security protocols, Mexus is just acting upon its initial programming. Like, of course he would want to stop us. That's the whole reason this Toon Summon Skull was ever created. He did nothing wrong, just following programming. The next thing to mention is this weird connection between the wet floor bots and Glamrock Bonnie. I mentioned that you have to turn off every wet floor bot to gain access to him, but he's also surrounded by four wet floor bots while still active. If you deactivate those four as well, he shuts off. Not only that, but when you oh. go in his green room tunnel, first thing you see is an outline of the wet floor bots. And when you approach active wet floor bots with the Vanny mask, you hear these ghostly wails. Something is here. Like there is some kind Bruh. of connection between the wet floor bots and Glamrock Bonnie. See, this is why I'm glad we're checking out someone else. This is the first time hearing about these wet floor bots. I mean, this is Matt Pat and Funaf didn't touch on this at all. So I I don't know. I don't know what the connection is. It sounds important though, especially if in the game through that tunnel they show it like there's clearly a connection there i just have no clue what it is yet freddy also presents some questions with his missing head and the location he's in plus and the heavy damage the it implies that this is the same freddy at the end of the princess quest ending however there are some issues with this one the damage on his front looks intentional as it's formed into a mouth and two there's this weird prototype stamp on his foot i bring up the damage because everything else seems accidental and like they were just destroyed throughout the game whereas freddy seems intentionally made that that way but that could just be a cool design feature the prototype thing has me hesitate a little more in security breach freddy does not have this prototype tag on the bottom of his foot this is new this could imply that this is a separate freddy but i think it makes the most sense that this is steel wool either slightly retconning the design or just it's been revealed through i, I do agree with that, that. i think it's prototype. the same glam rock. it's their way of explaining a little bit more on why the glitch drop virus didn't perfectly infect glam rock freddy all right i've put it off long enough let's talk gregory Helpy and the Vanny Mask. I yes! think it is most likely that the endoskeleton in the basement of the Pizzaplex is the Mimic, the main antagonist yes. from the epilogues of the Tales from the Pizzaplex books. Now, I'm not going to go into the debate on whether or not those books are within continuity. There is still speculation on both sides, and it's very heated on both sides. That's not what this video is meant to do. Very heated is an understatement, right? <laughs> so I'm just going to go over what the mimic means for Fast, this dude. game, and I'll make references to the book. This endoskeleton, the mimic, has the ability to recreate actions it sees and voices it hears, and it's that ability that it uses to trick Cassie into freeing it from the pizzaplex. The Gregory we hear throughout the majority, if not all, of the game is the actually the mimic pretending to be Gregory on a walkie-talkie. But if that's the case, what about Helpy? He seems seems to be allied with this fake Gregory, and although he looks normal, occasionally he seems to be taken over by something more sinister. Is this just the mimic the again? I hesitate on that, mainly because there's a few times in the games where Gregory and Helpy seem to bicker. One of the examples is the first time that Mexus is shut off in the Monty catwalks. Helpy mentions that he activated a jammer that counteracted him, but then Gregory chimes in saying that he did the real work. If this was all the mimic, this seems a little too intelligent for the trick it's trying to pull here to be pretending to have a fake fight to seem more real it seems like these are two separate entities but if they are i have no clue what help he is maybe it's glitch trap and he's still hanging around it's still too early to tell and finally the vanny mask or the virtual augmented neural network integration mask and i've seen shorter i like it. what this mask is but <laughs> it's so I much shorter i believe it's fairly obvious the acronym tells us exactly what it does this is not a security mask and it never was used by any of the staff here this is the mimic or glitch traps way of getting inside of Cassie's mind. The moment Helpy does that like occipital integration thing, we lose. We see him in the real world, it's over. Think about what the acronym is saying here. Virtual Augmented Neural Network Integration. A neural network is a computer program based around the human mind. It's essentially a type of AI and it's being integrated, integrated. into us. Yep. So what does virtual augmented mean? Well, it could be referring to the AR features of the mask, but I think these adjectives are modifying 
the nouns of that phrase. I think the neural network being implemented into Cassie's brain has been virtually augmented by Glitchtrap. This mask is how Glitchtrap or the Mimic is going to take over Cassie's mind, which leads me to the endings. The most straightforward ending I feel is the elevator, but I don't fully agree with what the game is presenting here. Several folks on Twitter already noticed that there's a shift in the dialogue while in the elevator. Gregory seems to break for a moment and there's a mic feedback and suddenly the dialogue repeats that it's Gregory. A lot of people, and myself included, think that this is where the mimic retakes over communication with Cassie. And that's right when Gregory starts to say, I know you didn't mean it, this is not your fault, but I can't let you be followed and the elevator falls. Essentially, I don't think Gregory said that, nor do I think Gregory dropped the elevator. I think that's the mimic taking back control. Also, Cassie surviving that elevator fall is very suspect, but I'm hesitant to think of any kind of robot kid shenanigans for now. To me, the second most straightforward <laughs> ending is the Fredbear cutout one. We see it, we put on the Vanny mask, and we see a recreation of Princess Quest. I think this ending is Cassie losing, because I think this is a recreation of the Princess Quest ending. Literally. Okay. This is the augmented neural network taking effect and Cassie's mind is trapped in this idyllic fantasy that she made it out and everything is okay. Meanwhile, on the outside, like Cassie's that. turned into the next Vanny. They already built the cage around the true mind of Cassie. There's a lot more evidence for this, but that gets into very speculative waters, so I'll save it for like two weeks from now. Finally, the strangest ending of all, what the files call the scooper ending, where the mimic puts on a stitched together costume, chases us into like a sister location room, and gets scooped. I'ma be so real i have no fucking clue what this means i will say however and i'm just gonna touch on this this ending is the main reason why i'm still not convinced that the tales from the pizza plex books are in continuity hear me out a huge important factor of the mimic is the white tiger in the books the mimic first copies its creator's son david david's favorite animal being a white tiger he has a plushie of it his bed looks like it and several times things. in the books when it has the choice to present as something, it is a white tiger. In the storyteller, the head of a white tiger animatronic has the mimic inside it. In Tiger Rock, it presents itself as the Tiger Rock animatronic in this VR game. The mimic likes presenting as a white tiger, which makes me feel like this moment would have been a shoe in for Steel Wool to say, hey, the books are in continuity. Look, it's an endoskeleton wearing a white tiger. I would have shut the hell up. I would have fully accepted that, but they didn't. They specifically chose a lion with other animals stitched on the sides. To me, in the current moment, this feels very specific because tigers and lions are pretty close, but they're not the same thing. Very to good me, point. this feels like Steel Wool trying to tell us in very specific terms, this mimic we're presenting you is very similar to the Tales from the Pizzaplex mimic, but it's not the same one. We've stitched on some extra things and changed its backstory. That's where I'm at right now. Just gonna be honest, I know people are gonna hate that. That's where I'm at. And hey, guess what? You're allowed to hate that and you're allowed to disagree with me that's how this shit works bro it's just so crazy how careful him and john funaf have been over their last video just because john from FNAF says the same things like this is just a theory you don't have to hate it like it's okay we're allowed to have theories so I can't even fathom the backlash they get. But I will be going deeper in on that next week for some extra. Yeah, we gotta check more. that out. And that's it. Every single bit of lore directly presented within the game, plus some light speculation sprinkled I gotta on peep top. It out. And I was pretty close to a good amount of it actually in my speculation right before the game came out, which you can see right there. In the meantime, a huge shout out to the best channel members around, the Doe Risers. And until next time, as always, Risers, stay like toasty, that. slices. Let's go! Let's go! Let me bring you in, sauce gang. Let me bring you in. That's our first time watching Ride Toast. So first off, I absolutely love Ride Toast's vibe. Uh, he seems like he's just a straight shooter, straightforward. I do like the fact that he actually cusses a smidge in his videos. As you guys know, I, I used to cuss a lot in my older videos. But now we're PG, family friendly. But I just love that he... By him dropping those couple, just like like literally, I think two cuss words, it just shows that he's real. He's not put on a front, not trying to do anything other than just give you what he's feeling on the actual game, his theory. I know this was definitely like the condensed, condensed version of it because he didn't really want to get into like 
kind of crazy out there lore. So I'm really excited to watch because I saw, I think there's a newer video. Um, oh yeah, smash that subscribe button, sure did. But he's got, Cassie is not who you think she is, FNAF Ruin Theory, 11 days ago. So yeah, security breach, ruin endings, change everything. Oh no, oh man, dude, there's a couple. We need to check those out because I want to see what kind of juicy stuff he's got for us. So let me know what you guys think. And this theory is a little different. I don't think it's too significantly different just because he was kind of saying stuff that was more just straightforward with the game. So I'm really excited to see the next two to see what's different and what's not different. But I had an absolute blast reacting to this. I'm stoked that we checked out Right Toast for the first time. Make sure you show Right Toast some love by subscribing to the channel, liking the original video. And if you enjoyed my reaction, please help support the channel by smashing that subscribe and like button. It's absolutely free and it greatly helps out the channel. Enjoy the rest of your day. And remember, it's easy to sleep and make beats and as usually be kind of one up. That's all I got. Boom, I'm out. Oh, get him love for the Sauce Cake Beats out,